So I would imagine most of you watching have a vague understanding of the history of the Norse Vikings. The seafaring warriors that were feared and raided European settlements for centuries. They had conquered many lands during their heyday, but eventually the Viking raids ceased in the early 11th century and the culture faded away. I know you're thinking, Wavy, what did you become some sort of world history channel? Just stick with me for a second. What if I told you not all the Vikings were wiped out and one remained, and instead of pillaging your village, he's out there busting some sick dance moves out on the boulevard. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most legendary videos to exist on the internet. The Techno Viking. Sometime in the year 2000, the footage of the anonymous muscle bound dance master was filmed and would be circulated across the internet for years and eventually would find itself on YouTube where it would go viral. It's a video that has been beloved by multiple generations of internet users at this point, and hell, there's even a Fortnite dance based off of it, Jesus. But what most people don't know is the man in the video, the Techno Viking, wasn't necessarily all too happy about becoming a meme, and ended up suing the person who filmed him. It's a pretty crazy story, and I'm gonna break it all down for you guys right here. Before we get started, I wanna let you guys know this video is sponsored by the folks over at The Ridge. They make these sleek metallic wallets. This one's the black aluminum gunmetal right here. It's super sleek, man. In The Ridge Shop, you'll find that the wallets come in various different types of metals and colors. The ones that I recommend personally are the burnt titanium and the aluminum gunmetal. So I want you guys to take advantage of this 10% off promo code that I have linked in the description box. That's www.ridgewallet.com slash wavy and use code wavy to get 10% off your order on the Ridge website. And this includes free worldwide shipping, so make sure you check that out. Anyways, let's get on to the video. So let's travel back to the day that the Techno Viking footage was originally captured. On July 8th of the year 2000, experimental video artist Matthias Fritz was filming in Berlin, Germany at a political demonstration called the Fuck Parade. And despite what the name may suggest, it's not some sort of giant orgy. This parade was basically a counter-protest to the annual Love Parade that's held in Germany. And essentially, the political protest featured thousands of young people dancing in the streets to elect electronic music, you know, your typical political protest kind of stuff. Anyways, while Fritz was filming, he came across a blue-haired woman dancing, and this is where we get into the genesis of the Techno Viking meme. While filming the small group of people, suddenly an intoxicated man runs up and grabs the woman, then pushes her aside. The man begins to walk away until he is grabbed by an imposing Viking-like man. The large bearded man then briefly talks with the rabble rouser, most likely criticizing him for the cowardice act, all while keeping a tight grip on the man's arm. The rabble rouser is then told to leave by the Nordic looking individual, and the assailant complies. Our hero watches the man closely and ensures he actually leaves the area and performs an iconic pointing gesture with his hand. The muscular man then begins to walk forward and almost as if he was some sort of compelling force, the crowd of people behind him follow suit. He is then gifted a bottle of water, takes a sip, returns it, and then the legend is born. Matthias Fritz, who had captured all this on camera, had not staged this interaction and nobody in the video is an actor or was hired by him in any way. It was just a ridiculous organic situation that unfolded right in front of his eyes when he had his camera out. He would go on to upload the video to his website and called it knee cam number one. In the pre-YouTube years of the early 2000s, Fritz's video was shared by email and word of mouth, but really wouldn't become a viral phenomenon until the launch of YouTube itself. In 2006, Fritz created his YouTube channel Subrealic and proceeded to upload videos from his old website onto the platform, including the Kneecam number no. 1 clip that featured that strange altercation at the parade. While the video didn't blow up at first, sometime in 2007, oddly enough, it was linked on a popular Latin American porn website with the title 4. Clearly the person who ripped the video onto that website thought the man resembled Thor or a Viking. And I'd have to agree with him on that. The link to the video on this website would drive traffic over to Fritch's YouTube channel and in the coming months his video would begin to go viral. Viewers fell in love not with just the video but the man who took front and center during it. 
The thing was, the man in Fritch's video was completely anonymous and nobody knew what his name was. And with him becoming a living meme, the internet was going to do what the internet does. They assign names to these kind of people. With his blonde hair, bearded chin, Mjolnir pendant hanging from his neck, and tall imposing stature accompanied with the electronic music playing in the background, the dancing man in the video would be dubbed by the internet as the Techno Viking. The Techno Viking would become one of the most beloved memes of the mid to late 2000s and people would make remix videos, dedicate YTMND pages to his likeness, and create countless amounts of parodies. The Techno Viking really became an internet wide sensation at this point. Fritch's video of the Techno Viking had taken a life of its own and essentially became a shared property amongst internet users, and he was okay with that. Fritch was perfectly fine with other people remixing and re-uploading his content. While the collective internet showed an outpouring of support for the man, the Techno Viking himself had remained anonymous, but as you will soon learn, he was certainly aware that his likeness had become a meme online. Let's fast forward a few years now to 2009, and at this point Matthias Fritsch had made thousands of dollars off YouTube ad revenue from his original video. The art project turned viral meme became one of the biggest triumphs of his career and I would imagine he was feeling inspired by the success of his video. But it wouldn't be all sunshine and roses because trouble was brewing. Sometime in 2009, Matthias Fritsch is checking his mailbox and he notices a cease and desist letter in it. The cease and desist letter was sent to him by a lawyer claiming to represent the man in the Techno Viking video. And here is a segment from that letter translated from German to English. My client has hired us to take care of his legal interests. We have to point out that use of our client's image, especially for commercial reasons, is a violation of his personality rights, especially the right to the image of one's likeness. The letter also demanded Fritz to stop the spread of the video and to also stop receiving monetization from it. In response to the cease and desist letter sent by the Techno Vikings lawyer, Fritz sent a letter of his own thanking the Viking for opening a line of communication with him. Fritz would insist that his intent was never Never to violate the man's personality rights, Fritsch would further elaborate that he would be happy to work with the anonymous man to market the techno viking likeness in a way that would be monetarily beneficial for both parties. And he would then mail his response back to the viking and his legal team. But for the time being, no legal action was being taken by the Viking, and it was pretty much dead air for the next few years. All the meanwhile, Fritch's original video continued to spawn derivative works, and the Techno Viking meme further embedded itself as a permanent part of internet culture. And around the time of March of 2012, the meme was reaching its peak popularity in Germany, the country it originated in. It had been years since the Techno Viking cease and desist letter had reached Matthias Fritsch and nothing had happened, so it seemed like the Viking was full of hot air. But in the next year, things would start to get a little spicy and a little legal. In January of 2013, we find out that the anonymous Techno Viking had sued Fritsch outright for infringing upon his personality rights. Yeah, for all intensive purposes, Matthias Fritsch was being sued by the meme that he inadvertently created. The anonymous Techno Viking claimed that Fritsch did not secure the permission to publish his likeness onto the internet and that was a violation of his rights and caused damages. An intriguing conundrum because yes, of course, perhaps the Techno Viking was filmed without his permission and he did become this massive meme. I would say it's hard to argue that his reputation or his image was damaged because of this. He became a massively loved meme because of this, and if he was willing to embrace it and perhaps work with Matthias, he could have cashed in on this. But it's clear that the Viking definitely valued his privacy and didn't want to have anything to do with this. He was certainly wanting to whitewash the internet of his likeness, and he wanted some reparations from Matthias at the same time. So with that said, here's a quote from Matthias Fritsch commenting on the lawsuit. I am being accused for creation and publication of images connected to the Techno Viking, therefore infringement of personality rights. They also say I am earning a lot of money by that. They argue that I gave him the name Techno Viking, create 3D characters, comics, and more to constantly increase the popularity in order to market Techno Viking and therefore cause damage to the protagonist. It seems like the plaintiff or Techno Viking felt that Fritsch was solely responsible for the spread of the Techno Viking meme. 
The case essentially boiled down to a free speech versus personality rights case. It was a weird case because there really just wasn't that much precedent in this type of lawsuit. The legal battle would go on for several months between Fritch and the Viking's lawyers, and Fritch claims the Viking himself never actually appeared in court. And finally, a verdict was reached in July with the court siding with the Techno Viking. The court sided with the Techno Viking feeling that Fritz's video did indeed violate the man's personality rights. And here's a summary of what the court was requesting Fritz to do upon losing the lawsuit. Fritz cannot display video or stills of his video in public if they show the Techno Viking in a recognizable way. Even pixelizing the Techno Viking's face is not adequate, the court ruled, because he could still be identified. Fritz must pay 56% of the trial costs and the plaintiff 44%. Fritch must pay the 8,000 euros he directly made from the original video on YouTube. The court ruled against the plaintiff's claim for the 10,000 in compensation for the pain and suffering. Fritch also had to pay 1,500 in legal bills for the Techno Viking's first lawyer three and a half years ago. So pretty much Fritch was forbidden to use the Techno Viking's image and was forced to pay up like $20,000 in legal bills. Fritch would comply and the Techno Viking video is no longer available on the Subrealic YouTube channel and he's forbidden to republish the video in its raw state ever again. However, derivative works by the internet collectively remain unaffected, and hell, it would be virtually impossible to block re-uploads. The legal bills from the trial put Fritch on the verge of bankruptcy, and to this day, nobody knows the identity of the Techno Viking, and I think it'll remain that way probably for a really long time, because it's clear he doesn't want to be known. Matthias Fritsch made a crowdfunded documentary about this whole situation, and I will put a link to that in the description box. It has English subtitles included. What do you guys think about the concept of creating a meme and then being sued by the meme itself or himself? I mean, do you feel like uh, Matthias was wrongly sued in this situation, or do you feel like he really did violate the Techno Vikings' rights? It's such a weird gray area with internet law versus personality law and violations of one's privacy it, it gets really muddy but let me know what you guys think about this in the comments section major shout out to my patrons i appreciate you guys wavy web surf out peace